Hello, this video will be about an idea, a possibility. What can you do if you were able to connect your entire 3D scenes with different camera setups or camera layouts or camera positions or animation? Well, back in the day when I used to work on Softimage, we had a, a camera sequencer which basically took the same scene and different cameras into one sort of video editing workspace and this became very useful because you could have many different shots within the same zine that can switch literally in in addition like when you're editing a video you can set the point in points out and also tweak the animation only for that camera and that that will be the only object that would be manipulated so here you're seeing the practical effect one camera is going up and down while the second camera cuts and then pans from left to right. And this is the approach that we, or actually I used to take back in the days to, to make quick cuts inside the scene. But what if you can do this on Blender using different scenes within different cameras? So now let's explore that principle on Blender 2.79, which is the... Uh, stable release. So let's say you have a super story plot and then you are going to be composing this on an overall global scene and inside that global scene you're going to open a VSE or video editing um, space for video sequence editor I'm sorry so that you can manipulate your global properties is seen, your 2D, 3D space, your global composition viewer, and also the graph editor or dope sheet. You can pause this later, review it at detail. So let's see, this workflow starts by creating the first scene, which contains a, uh, a dinosaur, and then a second scene, which contains a statue. And the script pretty much uh, make-believe script said that we need to overlay the dinosaur on top of the um, statue. So in this case, I have this first scene where I have the floor plus the T-Rex. This is just a quick example of how this could work. And then on another scene, I have the statue ready to be rendered. And as you can see, you even have different filters so you can create new scenes and inside those, inside those new scenes you can have many different objects like cameras, lights, but this column right there, as I was showing, it's bothering because you cannot um, adjust the width of, the, of this uh, properties space because you have these visibility icons that really bother when they are opened. So you cannot crunch this area. Anyways, down under you have the properties for the camera for each individual scene. So picture this. If you're on Eevee using the Grease Pencil tool, you may create the, the character on a layer, or rather on a scene, and right under that scene have another one for the background. And as you can see here, you have a real-time render engine that it's uh, directly representing your graphics on the screen. You don't need to set the alpha channel or you don't need to set the background to sky or transparent because Eevee does not have that limitation. You don't, you don't need to go through each scene checking out the render engine or the alpha channel. In this case it will be integrated directly as 2D animation over a 3D um, background. So let's go back to 279. Once you have everything ready, you have the dope sheet right here, and you can work to render this sequence directly from the global scene. And in case that you have reviews for the T-Rex uh, scene, let's say that the director wants the, the dinosaur to be moving from a certain position to another one, then you can may, you may as well just open up your scene, scale the dinosaur, manipulate it, uh, create a new shader, that is if you're working with your own station, but what if you could 
integrate this kind of work with other stations that you can append this kind of a scenes from other workstations and this is the proposal here that if possible blender 2.8 could integrate into its workflow So as you can see, if you want to make the uh, append file local, you can also do that. But in that case, every every change made on the remote station will not be reflected on the local station. That's why you have to decide beforehand what you want to do with that kind of file. As you can see, this speed right now is accelerated times three because it took a really, really long time to calculate these two simple objects, the statue scene plus the um, T-Rex um, object and that is understandable because in Blender 279 the stable release this current workflow is very heavy playing two simple objects at 0.06 frames per second the graphic buffer is saturated calculating light render settings materials one time per each scene and the VSE is writing it all to RAM preview in total calculating objects scene light cameras and materials three times in this example Render with 24 samples in a light path, which is the settings for cycles. Now I'm setting here the output to write a video, and let's see how long this video takes once we are going to be rendering this. So I'm writing an MP4 video, um, H.264 codec and this is taking a huge amount of time this is just a simple test you, you can do this uh, simple test also at your workstation to see how long it lasts but basically this 125 frame duration timeline this 125 uh, timeline frames really kick the course all the way up to the most top processing tasks so as you can see there the 12 cores are given are giving into much calculation right now for very stressful process for for the core I'm using an i7 core as you can see here I'm fast forwarding this three times as fast as the render went because this really was a very slow and painful process and just like I mentioned before this is due to the fact that Blender on the VSE is taking acquaintance on every graphical um, change and light path that there was set on each of the scenes. So as long as you keep adding scenes, it's going to keep calculating more light paths, say from 24 samples from the first scene, 24 samples from the second, 24 samples. So it's calculating many scenes. So here's the result. straight from the um, VSC. This is the video actually. You can see it right there. And it took um, f around 14 minutes to be rendered. So I have some suggestions in case that the, any of the Blender developers are watching this. Maybe duplicating collections should inherit the way they, they are rendered because right now on 279 they are um, going back to Blender internal. If your timeline has many uh, cameras, you can also switch um, from the VSC properties maybe. And maybe appending could work through a network to reach uh, remote stations that are working on that kind of scene. And also the VSE, the VSE viewer could have an override all scenes for render properties. And lastly, if you think about mixing the 2D and 3D workflows, you can pretty much squeeze all the advantages Eevee will have because you can go back, re-edit the, the strokes, the fill colors, and all of that can be mixed into a 3D unlimited space, just like a printing 
book with cameras and position of the cameras. I know it might be daunting right now, but if you get the read, if you get to my blog to read everything I've written on this thing, it will be much clearer. This video is just for proof of concepts, and thank you very much.